Hey guys, welcome to Ask a Reporter here at BTA. My name is Ella. This is my very first Ask a Reporter. I'm filling in for Amelia today. We're going to give her a little bit of a break, but she'll definitely be back next week. But I'm very excited to be joining you guys. So I hope you're having a lovely Friday afternoon. Now, today's subject is all about frogs, and we're very lucky to have the amazing Steve Walker, frog expert, scientist, works for Frog Watch SA, join us to answer all your froggy questions. So thank you so much for all the people that have wrote in there's some amazing questions and uh steve's also brought some very special guests for us to meet as well today so that's very exciting so steve how are you going i'm really well and thank you so much for joining us for our episode last tuesday did you guys watch that one at home and enjoy it i'm imagining some cyber uh nodding going going on um so we are going to be talking to steve all about the frogs and how we can find them um, and answer all your amazing questions Uh, So Steve, can you talk us a little bit about what you do and um, some of the work you've been doing, especially with the Frog Spotter app, because that was one of the questions. What are some of the other apps that we can use to look for frogs? Yeah, so I'm working with Frog Watch South Australia and I've been involved in citizen science of frogs since the early 1990s. So citizen science in frogs is about getting community members to go out and collect data for scientists so we get a really good idea of what's going on in the frog world. So there are frog monitoring programs all over Australia. Obviously, I'm involved in the Frog Watch in South Australia. There's also a frog census in Melbourne. Uh, There's another one in the ACT. All over the the country, there are frog monitoring programs. So if you want to get involved in a frog monitoring program in your state, just get on the internet, do a search for frog monitoring and the name of your state, and you should be able to find a way to get involved. There you go. So lots of um, exciting things to get on board. I actually downloaded the Frog app and found a couple of cool frogs in my backyard. And uh, can you show us some of the guests that you have here today? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So I've, I went out last night and did a little bit of hunting and I have put up a couple of different species. So this one is called the brown tree frog. Some people call it the southern brown tree frog. And there are three little guys in here. And I also managed to get some of the local common froglets. Hopefully you can see, in fact. Oh, they're so cute. These ones really like hiding. So I'll just hopefully move the bit of bark. And you might be able to see that there are three little frogs in this bit of bark. Inside the bark. Oh Oh. my goodness. So if I just... So Steve, when we're looking for frogs, what are some of the things we have to remember? Obviously you've caught these um, this morning, so they're still quite fresh and um, you're going to be releasing them a bit later. Absolutely, But what are some of the things? I can see you're not touching them with your fingers, you've got them on a piece of bark. Why is that? Yeah, it's best to try to avoid touching them as much as you can. Frogs have got very sensitive skin, Mm. and in fact, they do quite a lot of their breathing through their skin. Yeah. So if you imagine someone with sweaty hands had had got their hand and put it in your throat and started touching the inside of your lungs, it wouldn't feel very nice. No. So frogs feel the same sort of thing. So it's best not to touch them. And the other thing is that frogs produce chemicals in their skin. Okay. And they serve a number of different functions. One of them is to help keep them moist. Some of them produce antifungal agents and oh, anti- right. other antibacterial agents. Some of them produce sunscreens. So you don't want to be getting these chemicals on you. You certainly don't want to be putting your fingers in your mouth or your eyes after you've been touching a frog. No, so certainly not. it's best not. to avoid touching them. Good, good idea for sure. And I think we had, um, my uh, iPad has not showing the questions at the moment, so I might just pass it to Daniel. But I remember one of the questions that were asked by one of the lovely students that wrote in was, what are some of the most dangerous frogs in Australia? And what are some of the things we have okay. to watch out for when we're looking for frogs? And if they do have those dangers? Yeah, certainly we've got the introduced cane toad. Mm -hmm. So that is quite a a poisonous creature. So that produces um, poison in the glands in its skin and you don't want to get that in touch with you. That's actually deadly. Uh, Certainly a lot of the native animals have been reported to have died after they've tried to eat the cane toad and it is deadly to humans as well. So certainly don't want to be touching that. But as far as I know, none of the other frogs in Australia are deadly to humans. As I said, they produce chemicals so they can be a bit nasty and, and, and not taste very nice yeah but i don't but think we won't, we, we won't be eating any frogs no, hopefully no, no hopefully not <laughs> but the local 
local to Adelaide, the eastern banjo frog. It's got really big glands on the back of its legs. Yeah. And they can produce a milky poison Ooh. if they get harassed. And if you get that in your eyes, it stings. Oh, no. Yeah. And have you had that happen before? Unfortunately, I have, yes. <laughs> I suppose you've got to experience to teach it to other people. Yes, <laughs> but if you can imagine someone's got a little sewing needle, yeah. has heated it on the fire, oh, and then gosh. it's jabbing it in your eyeball, that's that. what it feels like. Very, very painful. <laughs> and frog poison doesn't wash out in water. Oh, really? How do you get it out? Yeah, I had to get some eye drops from the chemist. Oh, and wow. And so and just stay out. away from those guys. Don't touch yes. them. Not worth yes. it. No. <laughs> no one wants that. All right. Well, we might get to some of the questions. Um, so we've got one from Tristan, who's from Penley and Essendon Grammar School. So thanks so much for your question, Tristan. So Tristan says, I live in the area of Melbourne known for cute frogs called Pobble Bonks. And yep. I have some experience from frog and tadpole catching in a country town called Bright. Can I have some tips on catching frogs and other aquatic critters? Okay. Good question. Pobble bonk is another name for the banjo frog. Ah, so the one I've just been talking about with right. the poison, that's the pobble bonk. Well, actually, there's about five different species of banjo frogs in Australia, and most of them get called pobble bonk. So, but I think the one he's talking about here is the eastern banjo frog. Ah. So when you're looking for frogs, one of the easiest ways to do it is by listening out for their call. So if you can hear a frog and you can sort of get your ear in, you can find out roughly where it's coming from. And okay. sometimes scientists use a technique called triangulation. So if they're out at night in the dark, you just stand there and you wait for the frog to call. When the frog calls, you shine your torch where you think the frog is coming from. Yeah. And if everybody shines their torch, you get down to a very narrow really? location. You go, it's over there somewhere. We can oh, maybe yeah. take a few steps, turn the lights off again, and do it again. Fantastic. And the other way, of course, is just to turn over bark and logs and rocks and see look. if there's any sitting under there. Yeah, great yeah. one. And also with the Eastern Banjo Frog. Now, we had a little um, segment in our show where you did the noise, and you mentioned that by making the noise, you can almost attract frogs, especially yes. the male frog. Is yes. the male frogs because they're looking for a girl, is that right? Yeah, so most of the time when you hear a frog call, it's the male frog. So he's calling to try to sound really attractive and get the girls to come along so that they can make <laughs> and they, and they find can you at the, the end of the, end of the <laughs> sometimes that's all right but some frogs you've got to be really specific and mm. mimic the call really closely others you can just yell out hey frog and they will respond to that one. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, we've got a cool part in our show coming up uh, where we're going to try out some frog noises, but we'll get to a couple more questions first. Uh, so this one is from Orla at Banyul uh, Primary School. So thanks so much for writing in, uh, Orla. So dear BTN, what is the largest frog species in the world and where is it found and can you hold it in your hand? Is it too big? Okay. Well, the largest frog in the world is actually a frog from Western Africa. And it's called the Goliath frog. Ooh. Goliath, as in the Bible, the, the yep, giant. Yeah, big giant. And yep. these ones grow to mm -hmm. almost 40 centimetres long. Ooh, so how much would that be if so we're just sort of... I happen to have with me a <gasps> oh, prop. Oh, look at you. So this is a life-size prop of the Goliath frog. Oh, my goodness. So from the tip of its oh. nose to its bottom, they've been recorded up to around about really? 38 centimetres. Oh. If you stretch out the legs as well oh. as the body, <laughs> I'm actually getting a, oh, God, you're looking I'm getting at a, a visual picture right Almost now. 90 centimetres long. Oh. So that's the largest frog in the world, the Goliath frog. Have you seen one before in N the flesh? Not in real life, no. No. They'd be hard to find though. I, can, I mean, like they're big, but they'd be... Yeah, they're quite big. And some of the things that they like to eat include freshwater crabs. Really? Yeah, so and it doesn't good. damage their skin or anything No, they're the all inside. designed for that. Yeah. In comparison, the smallest frog in the world is a frog from New Guinea, yeah, which grows to about eight and a half millimeters oh in size. So we got the smallest one and the, and biggest, the biggest. Oh, this big one is really yeah. putting me off. I feel like we. Can you believe that, guys? That is huge. Oh. Yeah, and these have been re reported to weigh a bit over three kilograms. So that's about a little bit more than a couple of things of flour. Yeah, about, <laughs> about three, three, kilos three, of three bags of flour. flour. Or yeah. a lot of people's pet cat is around pet about cat. three or four. Oh my gosh! Kilos. Can you guys imagine having a pet frog that big instead of a pet cat? It'd yeah. Be pretty cool, but yeah, um, very cool. A bit slimy. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, well, that was a great question, and I really enjoyed that answer. I hope yeah. you guys did as well. So. Um, 
Talking about frog species, there's species all over Australia. Some we haven't even found out yet. Uh, we've got a question uh, from uh, Le Hazin from Canberra Christian School. Uh, what is the rarest frog in Australia and where is it found? That's a great question. It is a very good question. I don't know with 100% certainty which is the rarest frog. Mm. There are a number of frogs in Australia which are threatened. Yeah. And many of these are a re result of habitat loss. Mm. And in recent years, there's been a lot of work has been done on the corroboree frogs up in the, the mountain ranges. And the, there was some, the bushfires went through there earlier in the year. Mm. So we're not 100% sure how well all of these different frogs are doing. Yeah. yeah. And you're saying there's some frogs that haven't even been discovered yet. So Absolutely. can you talk us a little bit about the app and yeah. how it's so handy to help you guys find out more species of frogs and how you guys at home can help? Yeah, well, so the, the whole idea of the frog monitoring program is that people can go out and make the recordings of frogs. Mm -hmm. They can enter some environment data and send that straight to us through the website. We can then get on the website and headphones yep. have a little bit of a listen to the recordings. No Justin Bieber for you, it's all frogs. No, it's all frogs. <laughs> have a listen to the recordings that have been sent in and then we can identify the frogs by their call and that gives us a really good understanding of where the frogs are found throughout the range. Yeah. And we can get rough numbers of the frogs calling as well. Of course, we're only going to be looking at the male frogs because mm. they're the ones who are calling. Yeah. And so we might go, you know, it sounds like there's 20 frogs calling so maybe there's 40 in the population, yeah. so rough, rough doubling. Yeah. But it gives us a good ballpark figure for how they're going. And we can track whether new frogs come into an area. Mm. Or if we haven't heard any frogs for a number of years, we can be then going, something's going on here. We can go and investigate it further. Yeah, the, for sure. The great thing about having the general public involved is they can be out doing the recordings at any time. Whereas if it's a scientist, there's a certain number of scientists available. They can't go to every single spot all the time. Yeah, Whereas that's it. People who are out there living there. So you guys can help at home. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and especially people living in more remote areas. Yeah. Some of these frogs are only active after particular weather events, mm. usually rain. And it's a good time of the year now because we're getting a little bit of sun, but a little bit of rain. Yes. So nice and warm, a bit of rain coming through. Yeah. Perfect for you guys will have to do it and make sure you submit those sounds. It's mm. actually really cool. I was saying I downloaded it and found a whole bunch of frogs in my backyard. And it's actually yeah. quite exciting knowing that you're helping out, but you also get to find out what's there as well. Yeah. So and we've had cool. some people who have almost become addicted yeah because they send in a survey it's kind of like the pokemon find yeah. them all but it's like with frogs so it's a real helpful thing yeah, yeah. They've, they've sent in a survey and then we've responded with what they found and yeah. they're oh well what's at this spot down here yeah well some people adopt a spot and go to the same spot time after time mm. so we can see how the population is changing over time yeah. which is going to be really interesting amazing mm. now we're going to cut to a little quiz and speaking of sounds, and this is going to be what we want you guys to help us out at home. So our lovely uh, filmer, Daniel, is going to play a frog noise. And we want you guys to try and make that noise at home. And if you have trouble, we've got the amazing Steve, who has got a little bit of a cool party trick with the uh, old frog sounds. And he might be able to help us out. So we will let's start off with the eastern banjo frog. So this one did feature in our episode, so you might know how to do it already. But let's hear the sound. Awesome. All right. Did you guys make that noise? Can you try for us, uh, Steve-O? Yeah. It's, the, the Eastern Banjo Frog is a pretty easy one to make. Their call is typically described as a bonk or a bock. Uh, so you just make that noise, bring it down a little bonk. bit, try to be a bit echoey, and you get the bock, 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 bock. I think I sound like I'm about to throw up, but yeah, bock, bock, yeah. <laughs> bock. How do you guys go at home? See if you can do it. And if you're working from home, your mum or dad will probably be like, what are you doing in there? But give it a go. Let's all try it together. One, two, three. Bop. 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 There's frogs everywhere all around Australia all of a sudden. Awesome. All right, next one. We're going to try the common eastern froglet. So that's a little bit of a different sound. So let's hear it. Yep. That's a tricky one. It is a tricky one. Yeah. I'm going to leave this one all up to you. A lot of people say it sounds like crickets or other insects. Yeah. And it's taken me a fair bit of practice to get this one. I tend to curl my tongue inside my mouth and do a funny little position <laughs> with my mouth. Oh. 
Are you guys trying that at home at the moment? How do you do that? Is it all Practice. in the teeth? Or, yeah, yeah, it's the tongue and the roof uh, of my mouth. Oh, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. I just embarrass myself. But it's a bit tricky. Uh, can't do that one. All right, let's move on to the next one. Green tree frog. This is one of my favorite frogs just because I absolutely love the color. So let's hear the sound of the green tree frog. <laughs> Yep. Yep. So some people would describe this like a bark oh. or wood being sawn. So sort of a wreck, 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 wreck. Nice. Sort of noise. Are you guys doing that one home? Let's try it again. Wreck, 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 wreck. Need a bit of like that phlegm. Like that. Yeah. Coughing oh, yeah, up. It is a bit, bit like a bark, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. That was a good one. Let's try the striped marsh frog. Mm. This is easy. All right. Let's play the sound. Daniel, hit it. So Ooh. people often describe this as sounding a little bit like popcorn popping Ooh. or a tennis ball hitting the ground. Okay. So it's more of a puck, 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 puck. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys going at home? Are you getting it right? Have you had any weird, have you had any weird looks from your mum or dad walking in or if you're at school, any people outside? Let's try it all together. Yeah. Can you make it quite loud or does it have to be sort of soft to be the, realistic? For this species, they're sort of a, right, quite a soft. If you go really loud, the sound changes a All little right, bit. All right, conduct the frog choir. Three, two, one. Puck. 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 So sort of like a puck. 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 All right, you guys yeah. are going to be frog experts at making these party tricks. So you've got the weekend coming up. So if you're seeing friends or talking to them over FaceTime, um, if you're in isolation, this is a fun little conversation you yeah. can have with them. Speaking frog. And try to do it down your local creek so if you yeah. get anything responding to you. Exactly. So yeah. if there's no one around, you've always even got if there friends is, in the frogs. Yeah. <laughs> even if there's someone around. Who cares if they look at you weirdly? Yeah. Has that yeah. happened to you before? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's what's made you the man you are today. It has, yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I was out. It was a, a late Friday night. I was down at the creek looking for frogs and two ladies walked past and they said, <laughs> What are you doing? I said, I'm out looking for frogs. And they go, mm. how can we not out partying with your mates? No, I said, I'm with my mates it. here. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, you've had such an amazing career so far with frogs. And that's why we really wanted you to come in today because you're just such the expert and you've been so helpful with all these questions. We've got one more frog. Uh, now, this one's a bit of a different sound. Uh, the is. painted frog. So last time DJ Daniel play that frog noise. So this is a tricky one for yeah. a lot of people. Lucky last, it, it has to be the hardest yeah, one. It's a little bit like a whistle okay. with the pulses put into it. Oh, wow. oh that's so good. Ooh. No, I just sound like an injured magpie, but let's try again. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> no, it's not happening. How are you guys going at home? Can you do it? Ooh. No, listen to Steve. Beautiful. Yeah. I don't know how I do it. I it's just very calming. I feel it like you could, you could have your own Steve mixtape of frog noises well, as well. The painted frog, when you hear them out calling, if you're out camping yeah. and you hear them at night, it's like a lullaby. It helps lull you to oh, sleep. So there you go. What a beautiful call. Oh, awesome. Well, that's yeah. all we have time for in the quiz section, but we'll get up. We've got time for a couple more questions. So um, this one is from Daisy Me from Hamilton South Public School. Now, uh, Daisy wants to know how do frogs actually make their sound? Because is, yeah. is it through their mouths or is it yeah. through their nose or their tongues? Do it's, they have tongues? It's very similar to the way that we make noise. Okay. So as a human, you take air into your lungs and then out again. And as it goes down your throat, it goes over the vocal cords, which vibrate and mm. produce noise. So frogs do that, but they do it a little bit differently because they close their nose and their mouth. So they will take a big breath with their nose closed and their mouth Is that closed. the mouth or like so the, the big puffed down, up throat? The puffed up thing yep. down there, yeah. They will then push the air from this vocal sac okay. down into their lungs. So their lungs will puff up and their throat shrinks. Oh. And then they send it back again. And that's how... So they just go backwards and forwards and they sort of boom out the call using that big vocal sound. Because their sound for something so tiny, you can really hear them when you're mm. outside. They make huge noises. Yes, yeah, some amazing. of them do. Yeah. Some of them are really quiet. Some of them are incredibly loud. Yeah. Like the banjo frog with that loud explosive oh, bonk. I can't even imagine can what um, 
old mate big old frog would sound like yeah. do you reckon that'd be quite big i'm not sure of the call of that one that maybe that's something, something that to look into look yeah definitely um now we've got a great question from jasmine she says hi i love your show and i never miss an ask a reporter or classroom so thanks so much jasmine i hope you're enjoying this episode today it's been quite a lot of laughs i've been enjoying it myself um my question is um are there more frogs out there that we don't know about and she asked if her school can get a shout out so do you want to shout out to this one to pinewood Primary school? Uh, Plenty Valley. Oh, Plenty Valley International Montessori School. Yeah, so mouthful. shout out to you guys. Hope you're having a great Friday. Yeah. Um, so, Steve, what's your response to that? I would that? say it's always possible. And pe- scientists are changing their mind all the time. Mm. So there have been some species where we've previously thought they were one species. And scientists have started investigating. And they've gone, actually, we think these are more than one species. So we'll split that up. Yeah. So we suddenly have a new species of frog. Amazing. It's also happened the other way where people have said, no, these are actually all the same species. We'll stick them together. And occasionally new ones are discovered that we're just not known about at all. Yeah, there you go. And have you had experience finding any new ones in your career? No. I I have been out collecting frogs in an area where they were reported Mm -hmm. and we found them and had a look at them and let them go yeah and then later on they said that's actually a different species and it's like oh there you go you could have have been the the one who did that yeah (laughs) that'd be pretty cool to have it named after you um so what else can we oh so we've got another question which is quite interesting so this is from miss wald well done from Woodburn Public School. So I'm guessing this is from a teacher. Um, she wants to know, uh, what is the difference? Uh, can you tell the difference between a frog that looks like a cane toad in colour um, and an actual cane toad? Because there's some that look quite similar. Yeah, it's a matter of looking at the physical characteristics of these frogs. Mm. So cane toads have got these really big glands called parotid gla- mm-hmm. glands on the back of their head. So they're some of the key features. You can also look at the shape of the eye. The the pupil varies from species to species, size, and looking at the the toes, the hands and feet can give a good good indication as well. Now, cane toads aren't in South Australia where we're filming from, but they are up in Queensland, Queensland, Northern Territory, Territory. and into Western Australia now as well. Oh, there you go. Have you guys ever seen a cane toad? I know you can't answer us, but I'm I'm guessing you... Can you see them quite commonly when yes, you're in those yes, states? Yes, yes, unfortunately you can. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're moving across. So only a few years ago they made it into Western Australia. So oh, there's certainly okay. a possibility of them causing problems oh, over there. That's no good. Oh, well, we've got time for a couple uh, more questions. So let's just have a look. Um, oh, this is a really good one um, from Han from Holy uh, Eckhurst uh, Primary School. So Han wants to know, were frogs alive around the time of dinosaurs? Yes, well, frogs have been. I feel known. like that guy was. We're just pointing to that big this, frog. This one, up. I don't. Whoa. I don't know that this particular species was. Yeah. But <laughs> frogs have been believed to be around on the planet for over two hundred million years. Really. And the early amphibians, which of which frogs are a part, about four hundred and fifty million years or so. Oh wow! So they were around for a couple of hundred million years before the dinosaurs came along. There you go. And they're still here now. And speaking of uh, someone. Other, I was also asked a question. Uh, I can't see where it is on here, but I did just read it before, uh, so I apologise for that. But do frogs have bones? Because we find dinosaur bones. Um, so whoever yes. asked that, great question. Yes. I'm just trying to find here with my bad eyesight. But do frogs have bones? Yes, absolutely they do. So they're they're a vertebrate animal okay. like us. Yeah. One of the key things is they don't have ribs. Mm. So frogs are really good at squeezing through little narrow oh. places. Uh, we use our ribs to increase the size of our chest and mm. protect our lungs when we're breathing. Because frogs do quite a lot of their breathing through their skin, they don't need to bring the air into their lungs so they don't have those ribs to increase the chest size and protect them. Oh, there you yeah. go. But it's really handy for them to squeeze through places. Yeah. And sometimes you might see frogs leaping and splatting on the ground and you think that's going to do some serious damage to them. They don't have those ribs getting broken and piercing the, oh, their great. organs. And I just realised it was Bridget who asked that question. So Bridget, okay. thank you. That was a great Good question. question. Yeah. And that, that's why we sometimes do find frogs inside because they can squeeze through those Absolutely. little cracks and yeah. things like that. And people who've kept them as pets, they've had them in aquariums and they've discovered they've managed to squeeze through this tiny little gap in the corner 
and then get out into the house. Yeah, so there you go. You've got to cover up all those holes if you're going to keep them as a pet. Unless you want a little surprise. <laughs> now, um, someone, uh, Ekim, has also asked, um, why do frogs jump so high? Because they are really little, but they can get to far places. I'm sure if we yeah. let these little rivets out that they would be all over the office. Yes. I'm not sure how much the other reporters would like that. I'd probably be jumped on one of the tables, I think. They're not that bad. I know, but it's just, you know, when you see a mouse and it crawls yeah. across your feet or it's, it's just a surprise. It is. So tell us, why did the frogs jump so, so high? So some frogs are really good at jumping. Others not so good at all, but okay. the reason that they jump is to escape being eaten. Okay, fair so enough. So frogs are a major source of food for birds, reptiles, fish, mammals, other frogs. So they jump to avoid being eaten. So the, the basic instinct is if they get attacked, try to jump out of the way. I think the world record for jumping in frogs is held by a frog from South Africa. Okay. And this frog grows about five and a half, six centimetres. All right, so not And too it big, can yeah. jump over five metres in a single hop. Wow. Yeah. Can any of you guys do that if you're a long jumper or a triple yeah. jumper? Yeah, so it's that? like jumping 100 times your body oh length. Oh, my goodness. So jumping 150, 200 metres. That's crazy. With no run up. <laughs> oh. um, we had another question as well asking um, what kind of frogs are you allowed to keep as pets and if you are if you do want to keep a frog as a pet or maybe you find a tadpole in a creek and you're like oh it'd be so cool to yeah. have a pet frog which are the ones and the species that we're allowed to look after at home and then release or keep forever it, it varies from state to state so there are different guidelines depending on what state you live in mm -hmm. in south australia we're fairly easy on collecting frogs yeah. there are some species which are protected because they're rare or, or threatened but most of the other frogs in South Australia you can c catch. People often keep green tree frogs as pets. They're, yeah. they're relatively easy to look after. They don't mind being handled so much. So they're, they're a really good one to keep as a pet. Um, some of the other ones are a lot more tricky to look yeah, after. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. No, I've seen those green tree frogs at a few uh, different places with yeah. the stories are filled with reptiles and they're such beautiful yes. looking frogs. Yeah, so very cute looking things. You can see why people would like to keep them as pets and they're so interesting as well, frogs. They're so full yeah. of surprises. Yeah. And and the, oh, we, sorry, we always recommend not releasing frogs and tadpoles into the wild Okay. because there's a possibility of spreading disease or just messing up the wild populations of frogs. So oh, it's a, that's a good point. It's always our recommendation, don't let anything go into the wild. Okay, so, so if, if you, you have kept it in your home, you shouldn't release yeah, it. Yeah, if you catch it as a tadpole to watch it grow up, that's your pet you've got to look yeah, after for life. Yeah, that's a commitment, guys. So yeah. it's frogs are like a dog yes, or a cat. It's absolutely. just as important. So yeah. you've got to give it lots of care. Because I know there was some people that wondered about um, if they're in like your local your pond in your backyard and yeah. they're everywhere, if you're allowed to release them somewhere else. So that's okay, though. Usually if they're in your pond, yeah, you just, just leave, leave them. them there. Yeah. And if, if they decide there's too many in the pond, they will spread. They will spread out. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And that question was from Jasper as well before we found. So um, that was a great question, Jasper, about frogs because mm. I know a lot of people really want to keep frogs as pets. So that is good. That is good yeah. for something to know. Um, so we've got a time for a couple more. I hope you guys are having a good. Uh, are you, uh, just give us another cyber nod if you're enjoying this frog episode yeah. today. Are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. You can give yeah. me a visual nod. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Um, all right, let is, let's have a little... Okay, so this one's from uh, Asher, and it might be a bit of a trick question. So Asher's okay. from Ballara Primary School. She wants to know, hi, BTM, my question is, what is the most common frog in Australia and what is the most uncommon? Okay, so I can tell you in South Australia, the most common frog is the common froglet. Yeah. And not surprising given its name, common, because it's common, and yeah. froglet meaning little frog. The rarest frog that's similar to the question that we were asked previously where I talked about the corroboree frog mm -hmm. and not knowing exactly how the populations are going. For all of Australia, I'm not sure what is considered the most yeah. widespread, most common frog. There are some frogs which have got a very large range, mm -hmm. but are only in small numbers. Ah. And there's others which have got a very small range, but there's lots of them. Oh, there you go. So it's hard to judge. Yeah. Well, it's a great question, mm. and we just want to say a massive shout out as well to all the schools that are tuning in. Um, we really appreciate it, guys, and we hope, like I said before, having a great Friday. Have you got a froggy weekend this Friday, uh, this weekend? 
I don't Steve. know what I'm going to do this weekend. I might go have a chat with your mates down on the Maybe. creek. Well, yeah. I've got to go, let oh, these you've got guys to let these go. guys go, yeah. So I'll, I'll say, see you to them when I yeah. let them go. Yeah, oh, no, that's awesome. Um, I'll just check how much time we got left, a couple more minutes. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, no worries. Oh, this one's an interesting one. Um, now, Nikita from uh, Warakuna wants to know, do frogs have enemies? So I'm guessing you're meaning predators. And yes. And their predators are quite important from our story that we did too. Yeah, so lots and lots and lots of different things love eating frogs. Do you so eat frogs? I have tried <laughs> eating frog. I've only tried it once. Okay. Just so that I could experience it. Because people always say, it's have you eaten a frog? It's a delicacy in some countries. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a little bit like slimy chicken. Yeah, no thanks. So, yeah. Didn't, didn't do much So besides, well, so you're not eating them, so no. you're not a threat. So, so there's, there's all those enemies. mammals. So okay. there's things like bats. Yeah. There's quolls, all the other mammalian predators, cats and foxes, dogs, yeah. those things. <laughs> there's all the lizards, turtles, snakes. Gosh, they've got a lot of enemies. Lots and lots of birds love eating them. So, yeah, they're... Oh. Life is very dangerous oh, for a frog. Well, no wonder they've got to use those springy legs to get away Absolutely. then. And they're very good at hiding. They like are. you guys might have seen before um, with the frogs. If you're just tuning in now, do you want to have a, another quick look yeah. at any of the, the guys here? So these guys are so cute, by the way. So these are the brown tree these frogs These are the brown again. tree frogs. Now, you guys might not be able to see them, but they're blending into that bark there. So that's probably a great way for yeah. them to hide from those enemies, I'm guessing. So there is one right in the middle here. Who's got good eyesight? Oh, there he is. See, I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah. There you go. See him. Did you guys see that at home or at school? And there's another one quite flat over here. Oh, yeah, tucked down. Tucked down. Cool. And lots of frogs like eating frogs. Oh, really? Yes. Goodness. So there are some frogs who are actually specialist frog eaters. Do they, their own, their own breed of frogs or whatever? whatever. Yeah. So the funny thing about frogs is they don't chew their food. Okay. They don't have teeth for chewing. Similar to snakes or? A little so, bit. Yeah. So they can only eat what they can swallow, okay. what will fit in their mouth. So yeah. if you're a big frog, you can eat lots of big things and big frogs will eat little frogs. Oh, right. Including their own kind. It's so a tough life being a frog. It's a very frog. tough life. Poor things. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You're, you're hiding from all these predators and possibly even, even your mum or dad oh my gosh. or your big brother Can't or sister. Can't trust anyone. Can't trust anybody. Been a frog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no wonder they blend in with their surroundings yeah. and do their best to avoid being eaten. But you can find them. But lucky you don't eat them. So that's no, all right then. That. You're a friend yeah. for the frogs. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This yeah. one is a group question. Um, it is from Taylor, Lila, Fadia and Bri uh, Bridget from Armadale City Public School. So thank you girls for this question. Now, how many eggs does a female frog produce each time? It depends on the species. So there are some of the poison dart frogs mm -hmm. that maybe lay up to about six. Okay. And there are some like the cane toad, which lay thousands or millions. Oh my goodness. And that's why there's so many cane toads, I'm guessing, yes. all the eggs. Yes, so they lay lots and lots of eggs. And the reason that most frogs lay lots of eggs is because not all of them are going to survive to become an adult frog. There's all these predators trying to eat them. So what they do is they say, we'll lay lots yeah. and hopefully some of them will survive. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Mm. All right. Let's uh, have a look what else we can do. Oh, so this is um, a question from Jade from the Bur uh, Burr Public School. And she wants to know a little bit about the app. Do you have to sign up um, on the apps or can you just go on anonymously or so how does it work? With with our app here in South Australia, you yeah. do have to register yep. so that we have got a username associated with the record that okay. comes in. So if you find a rare cool frog and you need to double check it, you'll... Yeah. Yep. But it's really easy. You just put in your email address yep. and choose a username and password and that's it. There you go. Then you can just start submitting your surveys. Oh, awesome. And you can yeah. also listen to all sorts of sounds on the apps as well. So yes. even if you don't have that sound in your backyard but you wanted to know what a particular frog sounded like... Um, yep. They're, they're all on there. Yes, absolutely. And Steve hasn't done any of them himself. They're all real frogs, They're I'm all guessing. real frog calls. <laughs> You're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. All good. Um, all righty. Uh, let's go to... Uh, oh, this is, quite, this is quite a good one um, from Anna from Al Almada College. Uh, she wants to know how many frog... Uh, 
how many frog calls are there and why are frogs so important to the ecosystem? So okay. you talked a little bit before about them being important for food, but what are some of the other reasons? Yeah, so frogs are major predators for lots of the insects and other bugs, mm -hmm. many which we don't really like having lots of. Yeah. So they're good at controlling those. Okay. So we don't get overrun with mosquitoes because it's all the frogs and other creatures yeah. eating them. They're also important for cycling nutrients through the environment. Yeah. So if you imagine a frog has eaten a whole heap of flies, yeah. it digests them. It At poops some it out point, everywhere. it poops it. Yeah. So that poop then becomes nutrients, the fertilizer for the plants. That's so it's, it. it's really important really to be important. cycling through those nutrients in the yeah. environment. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, that's all we have time for, guys, unfortunately. But I've had so much fun today. Thank you, Steve, for the amazing um, guest appearance here at Ask a Reporter at BTN. Guys, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are in Australia or the world at the moment. We hope you learned a little bit more about frogs. And be sure to tune in next Friday for another great subject. And um, be sure to check out next week's very exciting episode of BTN. But thanks again, Steve. Thank What's you. goodbye? And frog can we do it i don't think there is a goodbye that's all right they just, Let's just, they just leave they just leave they just get out of there but we'll, we'll give a froggy goodbye yeah. sound <laughs> i'm gonna do the bark bark because that's the only one i can do <laughs> all right guys see you later see ya.